If you're a catfish farmer, you would agree with me that prevention is better than cure, which doesn't apply to catfish alone, but life in general. So preventive approach on your farm will save you a whole lot, which is way, way better than you having to start curing your fish. So many times, farmers tend to spend more money on treatment, buying different drugs in a scenario where a simple preventive measure would have resolved that problem without you having to start treating your fish and eventually losing some of them. In this video, I'll be showing you practically step by step on how to adhere to some preventive measures to make sure that your fishes are not dying and you are doing things the right way. If you are a beginner, stay till the end of this video because this is going to help you determine your success on this journey. Number one is biosecurity. So biosecurity are the measures you put in place to stopping diseases, parasites and harmful organisms from entering your farm, spreading within your farm and living on your farm, right? So these are the measures you put in place to make sure you are stopping parasites, diseases and harmful organisms from entering your farm. I'll give you and I'll explain further on that. Number one, people coming into your farm for instance, you don't know where they're coming from. So you need to disinfect whatever is coming into your farm. Is that okay? You need to disinfect always whatever is coming into your farm. When people are coming into your farm, you don't know where they're coming from. If it's possible, disinfect them. You can wash their, their boot just by the entrance of your farm with disinfectant before you allow them to come into your farm. When visitors visit your farm for either sightseeing or whatever, you don't let them dip hands directly into your pond because you don't know where they're coming from. You don't know harmful organisms they have on their hand, even though they have no intention of harming you, you don't let them do something like that. By dipping hand into your pond, you know, to catch fish and some of these things. That should not be allowed in your farm. And especially if you are into production, if you are into production, that is hatching, in the hatching room, they are very, very sensitive there. That is the frogs that are there. They are still very little and very small. A simple air pollution can cause them a whole lot and it can kill all your hatched frogs. Let's say a visitor is coming in just to look what you're doing and they are putting on a very, very strong perfume. Some of it can be harmful to them. And before you know, they'll start dropping and they eventually die. So there are a lot of things you would have to do to make sure that your farm is secured. You have to disinfect everything. All the materials you're using have to be disinfected your pond before you stock in if you're doing grow it has to be disinfected first you don't just bring in fingerlings or juvenile from another farm and pour it into the existing ones you have in your farm you have to probably quarantine or you you get a different pond you know to put this in you just have to make sure everything is disinfected in your farm using disinfectant a simple salt can be used to make sure everywhere is disinfected that is by washing whatever you have to use on your farm with salt can save you a whole lot than having to come and start treating your fish in the farm which is way way more expensive so that is biosecurity make sure your farm is secured and stay away from parasites diseases and harmful organisms number two is stocking density i think i have a video already made on stocking density i always keep saying it don't stock more than you are supposed to stock if your pond can take only 500, don't go and put 1,000. The more you stock, is not the more profit you're supposed to get, for Christ's sake. I've always been saying it. I have a video, you can click on the link showing in this video to know your stocking density. That is how you're supposed to calculate the amount of fish that is supposed to be in your pond size, right? There is a video on that on stocking density. Make sure you're stocking the right quantity you don't overstock your pond because there is a whole lot that will happen that will lead to your fishes dying when you stock more than you're supposed to stock and one of it is shortage of oxygen because the space they have and they are competing for is actually very small all of them in a confined small space will be competing for the little dissolved oxygen that is available number one thing you notice is that they'll start having stunted growth that is you're feeding them up but they are not growing as they are supposed to because they are too choked there's no space for them and they need space they need a better environment to be able to eat and digest and convert the feed you're giving them to um, their body weight right so you have to make sure that you're stocking the right quantity in your pond please do not overstock it's not helping you as a farmer aid and it is not more profit to you you will eventually lose more and number three is your water changing routine this is very very important this is key. Mind you, your fish are always in water. So you need to give them a very good environment. Your water changing routine has to be 
very very okay you can't tell me you are using surface pumps like um tapolin as i have here or bigger tank you know some of these surface pumps or concrete pumps and you're not changing your water regularly you can't you can't tell me you're doing that and you're changing water after a week it's definitely not a good practice so you have to make sure that your water changing routine is okay i know things are expensive right now in nigeria for you to buy food and to pump water alone with the current hike in electricity consumption it might be really really difficult to always keep on pumping water and that is why you need to do your calculation again to make sure you're stocking the quantity that you can handle but you cannot compromise good water changing routine for your fish especially if you're into production for instance let me show you what i'm doing right now in this particular pot this is what we call flow through you can see water coming in constantly and there is an outlet there that lets bad water out right so to our next tent we do something like this for them time to time we on flow through for them giving them fresh water letting the bad water go out so just know your capacity right if you know you're not that buoyant don't stock too many you can stock small that you are very sure you can take care of is that okay so make sure your water changing routine is very very okay make sure you stay till the ending of this video because the last one is the game changer hit the like button if you have not done so hit the subscribe button if you have not done so share to fellow farmers friends and family that you think this video will help them if you have not done so so let's continue number four is good feed and feeding that is one thing you cannot compromise as well the truth is feed is actually very expensive now it does not mean you start by cutting what you are supposed to feed your fish with. i know there are different videos on the internet how you can feed your fish many things today you feed them with cockroach tomorrow you feed them with fowl next tomorrow you feed them with banga soup i mean where are you learning this from you just have to make sure you have the money to take care of the right quantity if your capacity is 100 please do 100 don't do 500 make sure you're feeding them correctly and you're getting them a good feed you don't buy expired feed because it is cheaper it is going to definitely affect your fish right expired feed produces harmful substances that is aflatoxin that disturbs your fish a whole lot you wouldn't want to do that so make sure you're giving them quality feed right give them quality feed and don't compromise the feed you're giving them and also have a good feeding routine for them you can't tell me you're feeding your fish once in a week i mean they'll be malnourished eventually your mortality rate will be high and you'll definitely not make profit from that business so you have to have a good proper feeding routine with quality feed if you want to really do well in this business and the last one which i believe is what we have all been waiting for is prophylactic treatment this is actually a game changer right when you do proper prophylactic treatment you will notice that your mortality rate will drastically reduce you will not be losing too many fish as you were losing before now if you do prophylactic treatments in your farm it's going to help keep your fish healthy always healthy always and there are many prophylactic treatments i mean natural one there is uh, what we call the beta leaf treatment where you get to treat your fish with beta leaf once in a while there is salt treatment you can use salt to as well do prophylactic treatment you need to know how to do it once in a while so you do these things once in a while mind you it is not until they are sick right you're not doing them because they are sick you're doing them to prevent them from falling sick you're doing them to prevent diseases from breaking among them is that okay so you do prophylactic treatment and that would help keep your fish healthy strong always and you'll be more profitable in this business if you found this video helpful do not forget to subscribe like or share this particular video to people you know that it might be helpful so and if you have any question please drop it on the comment section we are always ready and happy to answer your questions right we are here to help and to make sure that people are doing things the right way so please drop your questions on the comment section and we'll be there to attend to them Thank you and remain profitable.